Welcome back to the three months of modal logics, the sequel to 100 Days of Logic here with Carnades.org. Today we are going to be continuing with the final 10 days of logic, looking at the question, are obligations eternal? And other questions for deontic and temporal logic. In the next couple of videos, we're going to be kind of looking at the ways that different types of modal logics interact with each other in this video Today, we are going to be looking at the ways that deontic logic interacts with temporal logic, specifically trying to answer the question, are obligations eternal? So, I would say this question can be divided into three parts. First, are all obligations eternal? Is it the case that for all P, it's obligatory that P implies that it always will be and always has been obligatory that P? Second, if not, are any obligations eternal? Is it the case that there exists some P such that it's obligatory that P implies that for all time it will always be the case and it always has been the case that it's obligatory that P? Finally, if there are some obligations that are eternal and some that are not, what separates them? Now, are all obligations eternal? This seems far too strong. It would seem strange for, for example, you to be obligated to call before coming by before phones were invented, or to be obligated to stop at stop signs when you know that you're the only person to survive the apocalypse. It seems that often obligations are in fact time specific. So there are some obligations which are not eternal in some way. Now, before we go on to the next kind of more interesting question, let's ask another. Are these two expressions interchangeable? I want you to pause the video if you want and think about this for a second. Are they interchangeable? If they are, what would be a logical axiom you could put in for them? And if they are not, what makes them different? Let's take a look. So. I would state the first one as, it is obligatory that at some point in the future P is the case. And the second one as, at some point in the future it will be obligatory that P. Think about it for a second, formulate your opinion, and let's go. So, to me, it would seem not. Here's why. The first expression claims that it is obligatory that at some point in the future you make P true. The second, on the other hand, claims that at some point in the future it will be obligatory that you make P true. So it's obligatory that it is the case at some point in the future that P means that you must, at some point in the future, go to the pet store, for example. As long as you go to the pet store at some point in the future, this obligation will be satisfied. You are obligated right now to, at some point in the future, go to the pet store. However, this is saying that at some point in the future, not now, at some point in the future, you will be obligated to, at that moment, go to the pet store. Here, there is a specific point at which you will be obligated to go to the pet store. Going earlier or later would not fulfill this obligation. So, for example, the first case might be that we need a new chew toy for our dog. So you're obligated at some point to go get that new chew toy for our dog. But it doesn't have to be in the close future, it's not at a specific point in the future. Whereas the other one might be, we're running low on dog food. When we get to having no dog food, you will at that point be morally obligated to go to the pet store and get our dog some food or our dog isn't going to be able to eat. But that's saying that at some point in the future, you will have that obligation at that time. Not right now, you have the obligation to do something in the future. If that didn't make sense, let's look at this in terms of a timeline. So our first one means that right now, you have the obligation to make P true at some point in the future. So right now, it's obligatory that at some point in the future, P. So... It's obligatory right now. Right now you have an obligation to make P true at some point in the future. But it doesn't matter what point in the future that is, based on this obligation. This, on the other hand, means that at some point in the future you will have an obligation to make P true at that moment. So at some point in the future you will have the obligation in that moment to make P true. You don't determine that moment. 
in the other one you do. Hopefully that makes sense. If that was confusing, think of it in terms of the past. The first obligation, which either has been fulfilled or is impossible to fulfill, since it's obliging that you do something in the past. The second obligation is a statement of fact about an obligation which existed in the past. It's obligatory that P happened in the past means that you are obligated now to go back in time and make it so that you went to the pet store at some point in the past. Your obligation is occurring now. Whereas on the other formulation, you had an obligation at a specific time in the past to go to the pet store. Your obligation is not occurring now. It was occurring then. Hopefully, this makes sense. Now, back to our question. Are any obligations eternal? Even if some obligations are not eternal, we seem to want to say that some obligations are eternal. Perhaps that even though it was culturally appropriate at the time, we want to say that it was still wrong for people in the past to own slaves. That maybe that it was always impermissible to kill. Or, even more general still, that it is obligatory to act in such a way that produces the most pleasure for the most people at all times. The answer to this question is going to end up being up for debate. Moral particulars are going to claim that we cannot have any overarching moral values which can transcend time, place, and context. And some meta-ethical positions will go as far as to say that there are no obligations whatsoever, and therefore no obligations can be eternal. However, nothing in the logic alone seems to point one way or another, or we don't have a really strong logical intuition one way or another. It really depends on your position in kind of meta-ethics. Now, before we continue, here's another question. What, if any, are the differences between these two expressions? And if you didn't try the last one, I really want you to try this one. Pause the video and give it a try. If you don't understand what those expressions mean, you should check out the final video in our Temporal Logic series that talks about Occamist branching time. It's pretty cool stuff. Okay, hopefully you've paused the video, tried to come up with your own answer. We're going to push forward now. So the first one says you are obligated to make it such that in all possible futures, at some point P is the case. While the second says, in all possible futures, you will be obligated to make P the case. Now, the second one can kind of be pretty easily understood. So imagine you've murdered someone. In all possible futures, no matter if you get caught or not, at some point, you will be morally obligated to confess your crime. Okay? Hopefully, that makes sense. However, the other formulation may be a bit more confusing. How can you be obligated to make it such that P occurs in all possible futures? Well, maybe it's not possible to make it occur in all possible futures, but maybe all the possible futures that you have access to or that you can make something occur in. Let's take a look. So imagine that you're flying an airplane that's about to crash. You can either try to land the plane on a runway or land it in a field. The problem is the runway is up on a plateau. So if you miss the runway, you'll fall off the plateau and everyone on the plane will die. But if you make it, everyone on the plane will live because the runway is nice and flat. Everyone's going to be safe. The field, on the other hand, is going to be rocky and dangerous. And you know that if you try to land it there, some people will surely die, but you'll be also sure not to kill everyone. Now, if we said that you are obligated to make it so that for all future timelines, at least one person from the plane was alive, we would say that you must land it in the field. So it's obligatory that for all future timelines, at least one person is alive. You have to land it in the field because if you land it on the plateau, there is a timeline such that everyone dies. If we said, on the other hand, that you're obligated to make it so that for at least one future timeline, all of the people would be alive, we would say that you must try to land it on the plateau because in this situation, you know that if you land in the field, at least one person will die. So there are no future timelines in which all of the people will be alive if you land in the field, so you must land it on the plateau or try to land it on the plateau. 
Hopefully that makes sense. I think that obligation and kind of these Alchemist branching time operators can actually be used in really interesting ways to ask more complex questions about the decisions we can make when we don't necessarily determine everything about the future, but we can determine some element of the future. Okay? Finally, if there are some obligations which are eternal and some that are not, what separates them? Well, this is one of the central questions of ethics, and it can't simply be answered here. The point of this video and these videos is to talk about the logic of this. So what we're going to do instead is explain how to express these obligations. So this is the way you can express it is always obligatory that P. It always has been and always will be. E O B P says there exists some point in time when P was, is, or will be obligatory. This is going to express it is always obligatory for all timelines that P is the case in all future timelines at some point. So for all timelines at all points in the future, it's obligatory that at some point in the future P be made the case. And at some point in the present, future, or past on some timeline it will be or was or is impermissible to make it so that at any future point on any future timeline p is true hopefully these make sense play with it on your own try to make your own combinations of these different modal operators to get a better sense of it um, and try to formulate ethical arguments with these different operators and see if they help out up next we're going to be doing a fantastic video we're going to be talking about our deontic logic, but also our doxastic and epistemic logic, looking at the ethics of belief, which is William Clifford versus William James. A huge debate in the ideas of what you should and should not believe. Please stay tuned. It's a very important debate back and forth between William Clifford and William James. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.